Amen. 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 At this 7 o'clock hour, everybody here, that the Lord has blessed you immensely with dialing this number. Amen. Amen. So God can speak to your heart tonight. You're going to find me tonight in Romans chapter 12. Amen. And we're Amen. really moving along in the book of Romans because we was in the last two Bible studies in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and we done made a great big jump tonight in Romans <laughs> chapter 12, verse 2. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So let us remember that uh, God bless you. Welcome everybody to the lab. All right. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. God bless everyone. Amen. The bell is ringing. All right. So we're going to go right there tonight to Romans chapter 12. And verse, well, I'm going to actually say verse 1 and 2. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And the subject tonight is how to be transformed. Now, you know, people, they throw that out. You know, they say, well, you know, you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But, you know, it's one thing to throw something out, but it's another thing to show you how you get it done. Amen. Amen. And tonight, <laughs> this Bible study is going to show you how to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Uh, now, like amen. I say, as the bell is ringing, I'm in Romans chapter 12, and we're going to start. I'm going to read verse 1 again, and then I'm going to go right into verse 2. But our key verse tonight is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Okay? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Fathers, we lift you up. We praise you. We thank you. We glorify you, God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And tonight, we would just like to thank you and praise you for everything you are and everything you do. God, tonight, as we go into the book of Romans, Romans chapter, chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, we ask you to bless us, encourage us, guide us, and more than anything, Lord, the one thing that nobody can do like you, and that's teach us. Teach us how to be and live for you. Now, God, we give you all the praise, give you all the glory. I rebuke and find anything that is not like God on the line tonight. So let us be humble and let us be ready to receive what the Word of God has to say tonight. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, and everybody on the line said, Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay, saints, you see me in Romans chapter 12. And I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, you learned how to do that last week. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed, be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed, I'm in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, I'll start again. And be ye not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good, what, what's, that's good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans mm -hmm. chapter 12, verse 2, I'm going to read it again. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Okay, let's get into it. Now, tonight is about being transformed. Okay, so as you read this verse, the one point that comes in so strong, is do not be conformed. So when you read that verse, that jumped right out at you. Do not mm -hmm. be conformed. Be not conformed. Now, conform means, I want to make sure y'all can hear me good, conform means to comply with rules. Mm -hmm. Seven, mm -hmm. he said do not mm -hmm. be conformed. Okay, conform means to, you know, uh, to copy or to go with certain rules certain standards or laws. Mm -hmm. Now, here's some synonyms, because I want you to make sure you get it. When the Bible says don't be conformed, he's talking about this word conform means abide by, mm -hmm. obey, mm -hmm. observe, follow, keep to, stick mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. uphold, don't heed to it, mm -hmm. accept it. Are you listening mm -hmm. to me? Don't go along mm -hmm. with it. All mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
or fall, listen, or fall in, or Amen. respect it. Amen. Now, if, listen, now if it deals with a person, okay, do not be conformed or behave according to the socially accepted mm -hmm. convictions or mm -hmm. standards. Amen. Okay? That means that by no means should you abide by, obey, or observe, or go along with the things of the world. Amen. Now, see, you know, this really begins to start a little stirring straight up in my spirit because I see so many times now the church want to be like the world. Mm -hmm. But when you read this verse, it might start shaking up your attendance somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because you got to realize something. If the Bible says that we're not supposed to uphold, he accept, or go along with, mm -hmm. and that's all you see people doing, we're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if mm -hmm. it's talking mm -hmm. about a person, like I said, you know, uh, that you're not supposed to uh, go along according to the socially acceptable convictions or standards of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, that's just a reminder, because mm -hmm. I see people get into the Word, and you need to understand what being conformed to the world is, mm -hmm. because how can we have a Bible study if we're not studying the Bible, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, you have to know what to do and what not to do, mm -hmm. and this is the thing that Jesus tells us not to do. Now, the first thing comes to my mind, because I'm just an ordinary guy that serves an extraordinary God. My first question, Sister Andrew, is why? <laughs> now, now you can sit over here and act like you know that ain't cross your mind, but you know you need to. You need the first thing on to my mind is why. Mm -hmm. See, as a believer, we are not to be on the same system as the world. Amen. As a Amen. believer, we are not Amen. on the same Amen. system as the world. Amen. Or shall we say? The kingdom of man. Mm -hmm. All right. now, 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 the Bible say, Lord have mercy, this thing getting good already. We in the world. Let's mm -hmm. say the word. Okay, mm -hmm. we in the world, yeah. but we're not in the world. Mm -hmm. We're not of the world. You understand? Mm -hmm. We Listen, we walking right yeah. alongside with mankind, everybody mm -hmm. and everybody on the job, everybody at the grocery store. We mm -hmm. right there with them. Mm -hmm. But we in the world, but we're not of the world. <laughs> Amen. All right, right. Now, now, let me tell you something. Right Amen. there ought to let you know that we ought not be rolling with the kingdom of man. Amen. Now, now let me tell you some scripture because, see, the word, are we in the word? See, we got to stay in the word. Amen. Okay. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 44 says, Second Corinthians 44 says, now, we're in the world, but we're not a part of the world. Listen, we're in this world, okay, but we are, listen, we are not under the kingdom of man. We are under the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Now let me let me read. Second Corinthians forty four says, "The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep uh -huh. them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, uh -huh. who uh -huh. is the image of Christ." Now let me give you that again, because that's what you need to write down. Because somebody say, well, "What do you mean you're not in the world?" I'm in the world, but I'm not a part of the world. Second Corinthians mm -hmm. 44. I'm sorry, Second Corinthians. Uh, listen, listen. It says the God of this world has blinded the mind of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the glorious gospel. Okay, and seeing the light of the gospel and the glory of Christ, who is the image of Christ. Now, so that lets you know, first of all, the God of this world. And this world has a ruler. This world has a ruler. Now, let me say this again. We in the world, but we're not a part of the world. And when the Bible Amen. says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, be not conformed, that means that we're not supposed to abide by, obey, observe, follow, or uh, listen, keep to, stick to, uphold, heed, or accept it. <laughs> you understand? Because you are not. Listen, you're in the world, but you're not a part of the world. Amen. You belong to Christ. See, the Bible tells us that we're pilgrims down here. Pilgrims. We're just passing through. 
And the Bible hey. tells us in Second Corinthians that the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of Christ. This listen, the God of this world is Satan. He's the ruler, the little G. Now don't get to thinking about him saying he's the big G, because he ain't. Now, that's the main Amen. reason why we can't be conformed to the world. Amen. You understand? Now watch Amen. this. And here's another reason. First Corinthians chapter three, verse nineteen. I'd like to give you two witnesses, maybe three. Okay, first Corinthians three nineteen says, The wisdom of this world is the wisdom of this world is full fully <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, y'all. The wisdom of the listen, the wisdom of this world is folly with God. The wisdom mm -hmm. of this world is folly with God. Now what does that mean? Let's put it in plain language. The wisdom of this world is foolish to God. Amen. The wisdom of this world is foolish to God. First Corinthians chapter seven verse thirty one. Let me give you another one. The present form of this world the present form of this world is passing away. It's passing mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. See, we're not, listen, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We are held to the standards of heaven. Mm -hmm. You've got to realize something. That's why people say, listen, people are called, say that they're lost. Because they ain't been found. Because they ain't found Jesus. Are you listening mm -hmm. to me? Mm -hmm. So you, listen, you're surely not lost. Amen. Why? Because you've been born again. And listen, this is how you know that you're in the world but not this world because the Bible said you've been born again from where? From above. Amen. From above. From Amen. above. See, let me say this to you. You've been born twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. You came, you came through your mother's womb. That's the only way you're going to get here. Amen. Ain't nobody dropped out the sky. <laughs> Ain't no storm <laughs> down here. Okay. Amen. Amen. You, you were born Amen. through your mother's womb, and then you've been born again from above. He told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. <laughs> that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. Marvel not. <laughs> But don't sit there with a question mark on your head. Mm -hmm. I said you got to be born again, born from mm -hmm. above. Is anybody with me tonight? Somebody amen. say amen. 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 Okay. Now watch. Amen. Now we want to conform ourselves to what's eternal. See, you don't want to conform yourself. I just told you. Didn't I just tell you? First Corinthians seven thirty one. This world is passing away. Right. So you don't want to conform yourself to that because you want to conform yourself to what's eternal. Amen. Now let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. I'm going to 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2, I didn't Amen. say John, that's 1 John chapter 2, Amen. verse 15 the 17. It says, love not the world. How clear is that? Mm -hmm. Love not mm -hmm. the world. These are the things that are in the world. Mm -hmm. If any man, listen to this, if any man loves the world, the love of the Father mm -hmm. is not in him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Now you, you, know, you keep on, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this, is, this is black and white, baby. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 16, Samantha. It says, for all I'm in mean, First John chapter two and verse sixteen. First John. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. It's not of the Father. That's not of the Father. Mm -hmm. But it's of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse seventeen of First John chapter two. And the world passes away. See, I just told you that. Mm -hmm. Did I just mm -hmm. say that? Away. And the love yes. thereof. But he that doeth the will of God will abide forever. See, that's why I told you mm -hmm. that you don't want to, listen, be connected to the world. You want to be connected to what's eternal because what's in the world is passing away. Mm -hmm. Passing away. It is passing away. Mm -hmm. And you're going you're gonna to be passing right on with it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Where you pass them off to, you're not going to like it if you keep conforming mm -hmm. yourself to the world. Amen. Amen. Now, 
You know, sometimes I had to sit back and let you think about this. Uh-huh. Remember, it's all passing away, y'all. Well, you understand? Man, Every day, man, you man. Make more, another gray hair, something else we see, a world, <laughs> all this stuff. I mean, you know, <laughs> and the world is passing away, mother, with all its desires. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. And John said, Saint, don't love the world. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, Amen. See, 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 you know, sometimes God will slow everybody down. Slow all of us down. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, cause, because cause you think you're just going to run through Scripture and leave stuff back. No. No, no, no. God uh-huh. says he wants you to hear what the words that are coming out of the Word. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm right here in, in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and we're talking about being conformed to the world. Now, watch this. Don't get so captivated with the Word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you, you know, we shouldn't be like, ooh, my man. Oh, that's my man. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. Don't get so captivated with the world. Amen. Because you got some Christians get more excited about what's on BET, Mm-hmm. VH1, mm-hmm. okay. What's on the mm-hmm. What's on the Listen. What's on the Soul Station, the Blues mm-hmm. Station? Mm-hmm. What's on the Jazz Station? Mm-hmm. Instead of tuning in the God Station, mm-hmm. he said, "Don't get so captivated by the world." Mm-hmm. Because let me tell you something. If you get so captivated by the world that you walk away from your relationship with God. Mm. And let me tell you something, don't act like it can't happen. Mm-hmm. See, people can hey, listen. I'm right here in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I haven't got any further than be not conformed. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Don't get so captivated with the world that you walk away from your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. God yeah. wants us. He mm-hmm. wants us yep. of this reality. And the reason mm-hmm. why he warned us of this reality, Pastor Hart, because it can happen. Let me say, the Word of God is not telling us this because it can happen. The Word of God is telling us this because it does happen. Amen. Amen. See, because when people start going in the other direction from God, you notice something going to get your attention. If God ain't got your attention, the devil got your attention. Uh Amen. 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 They might not like what I'm saying. Amen. Uh See, listen, you get so close to the world that you can lose your effectiveness. Mm-hmm. Now, I did not say that you're going to you lose your salvation. So don't mm-hmm. tell nobody that I said mm-hmm. that tonight because you'll be telling a lie on me. I didn't say mm-hmm. that you're going to lose your salvation. <laughs> but I'm not saying that, listen, I'm not saying you, that you're going to lose salvation because that's a whole nother level beyond my pay grade. You understand? Mm-hmm. See, when you come down to losing your salvation, you on God's uh-huh. prices level. See? Mm-hmm. But I don't know at what point you know if you can even lose your salvation. You don't know if somebody lost their salvation. Amen. You don't know. But I'm here to tell you that if you're captivated by the world, you can be led to desert the Lord. Did you hear me? Uh-huh. Let me say that. Amen. You can get so captivated by the world mm-hmm. that you can be led to desert the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now, somebody uh-huh. said, Pastor, now, mm-hmm. wait a minute now. You mean to tell me people can get so captivated by the world that they desert the Lord? Let me show you something. Yes, yes. Second Timothy. Mm-hmm. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. It clearly says, Demas. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Demas. You remember Demas? Well, if you don't remember, I'm going to remind you of a brother named Demas. Mm-hmm. He said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, Mother Hot says, Demas, in love with this present world, mm-hmm. has de- deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Let me read it again. Because mm-hmm. some people think that God mm-hmm. is just throwing stuff out here. But let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. We're in the Word. we in the Word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right here Amen. in Second Timothy chapter four verse ten, it Amen. says, "Demas in love with this present world, 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 has deserted, deserted, deserted me and gone to Thessalonica." Good God in heaven! 
Amen. See, a believer who loved the world, he walked with Paul. Yes, he did. He, yes, he, did. he was right there mm-hmm. with Paul when he was in prison. Yes, he was. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. He was there with Paul while Paul was in prison, and he dropped him. Mm-hmm. Now, if somebody dropped Paul, you think they won't drop Jesus? Amen. Amen. Let me tell you You're talking to the man that wrote half the New Testament. Yes, yes. Uh, he dropped him and left him alone. Why did he leave alone? Why did he leave? Listen, Paul in prison. He left Paul. Paul didn't have nobody. He was deserted. Uh-huh. Paul, Paul started writing letters. Now, 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 wait a minute. Listen, Paul started writing letters. But God put such a powerful anointing on his letters that they had him locked up and he still reached half the world. Amen. You understand? Amen. See, don't, 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 let me tell you something now. <laughs> you know, because there are situations where you got to realize something. God let Paul and Cyrus out of prison. Mm-hmm. And they went to spread the gospel. Yes, but sir. God left Paul in prison. Uh-huh. And Paul still spread the gospel. What I'm trying Amen. to tell you, God's word will get out. Amen. God's word will get out. Listen, Amen. no matter what situation Amen. you're in, don't Amen. worry about it. If you got God on your side, Amen. God will use you and get the word out. Get the Whether you get Amen. it, so let me let me keep on. Going. Amen. Let me keep Amen. on. Going. Amen. He loved the word. Amen. Amen. He was uh-huh. walked away from his devotion. Listen, Demas walked away from his commitment to Christ and left Paul in prison alone. Did you hear what I said? Amen. You hear what I said? You hear what I said? Mm-hmm. See, this is the danger. These are the dangers. Can I get somebody to say amen? Somebody mm-hmm. say amen. Because I want to hear sure that you hear that amen. amen that's coming out of my mouth. Amen. amen. You start walking too close with the world. Mm. And I'm gonna tell you something. The devil got a trick for you. Amen. He got, yeah. Let me tell you something. If you don't think he got a setup for you, mm. he got a setup for you. Amen. Yes, yes. Set up. Amen. Listen. And verse two here, verse two. I'm in Romans chapter twelve, verse two. Verse two here gives us another reason. Now watch this. Verse two gives us another reason. Look what it says. It said that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Let me say it again. Here's another reason. Right here in verse 2. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now watch this. This verse gives us a whole other reason, okay, not to be conformed to the world. Mm-hmm. He says that by testing that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now listen, it's something that we all can do. And we all need to understand God better. That's something every last one of us on this line, that's why you want to hear Bible study, because you want to know God better. Now I need everybody that's on this Bible study to say amen. Say amen. 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 Everybody Amen. on this Bible study is here, and this is something that we all want to do. We want to understand God better. Am I right? Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. We all want to know more of God. We all want to know Amen. more of God. Okay. Amen. So, how can we say, listen, so how can we say this? Or how can we be like this? So, stay away from being like, the world. That's the one way you're going to get closer to God. Amen. And we can all do that by staying away from being like the world. Now, this Amen. is what he's telling you. Right here, he says, that right here in verse 2, he said that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Now, Amen. how are you going to do that? By staying away from the world. Amen. Now, listen, Amen. we got questions about our marriage. Sometimes we got questions about marriage. Say, Pastor, mm-hmm. what about this in mass? You come there, you say, Pastor, I got issues on my job. You say, Pastor, mm-hmm. I got issues with my future. Some people say, Pastor, I got, I got problems with my children right now. I just need to talk to you about my children, Pastor. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now watch what this, let me tell you something. This is powerful what God is teaching. 
And we all need and want more discernment. Because we want to know how to deal with the family. We want to know how to deal with church, mm -hmm. with stuff in church. We want to know how to deal with people. We want to know how to mm -hmm. deal with the job. We mm -hmm. all want discernment. That means mm -hmm. everybody wants to know God's will uh, in all situations. Amen. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Amen. Amen. Everybody amen. wants to know God's will in uh, all situations. Uh, 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 okay? Amen. Amen. And Paul said, the way to know God's will in all situations is to stay away from being conformed to the world. Amen. 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 Now, see, everybody wants to just, you know, automatically, Amen. you know, boom, there it is. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. It don't happen like that. It don't happen like that. And he said, if you want to know more about what God's will is in every situation, he says, stay away from the world. Now, because in this verse it says that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable. Right in this verse, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable. Now, let me tell you something. A little. Let me give you a little little Greek here. Okay, there's one word in Greek that says all of these words right here, where it says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable. That's one word in Greek. One word. It don't take all them things to say the one word in Greek. Mm -hmm. And that word in Greek is dosimato. Dosimato. And it almost sounds like you're talking Chinese. <laughs> dosimato. Dosimato. Did y'all say dosimato? Dosimato. Dosimato. <laughs> and almost like you want to go in a Chinese restaurant and say, give me some dosimato and two uh, shrimp eggs. <laughs> The word dosimato means find the worth of something by using it in the real world. Now, let me tell you something, saints. Let me tell you something. Let me say this again because this is something I don't want you to miss. This word dosimato, what it means in Greek, it means find the worth of something by using it in the real world. In the real world. Watch this. Watch this. That means as you conform yourself to him, right here, right now, he is working in your life and guiding you. So, See, when you don't conform to the world, you got to realize something, you're being conformed to the image of Christ. Mm -hmm. And when you're walking with God, you're going to get revelation. You're going to get understanding. The Holy Spirit going to be speaking to you. See, the problem with a lot of people that don't have discernment and don't know the will of God is because you've got too much world in your ears. Amen. Oh, wow. Amen. Amen. You're leaning too much towards the world. Mm -hmm. you're, watching too Amen. Much, you're watching too much stuff on TV that you don't mm -hmm. need to be watching. Amen. You listen to too much music Amen. that you don't need to be listening to. Amen. Nobody on this line should be listening to the music of the world. Amen. Nobody on this Amen. line should be watching worldly stuff on TV. Listen, Amen. if you're going to conform to the image of Christ, ain't no Christ in here. Amen. 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 It ain't no Christ in R&B. Amen. 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 Are y'all listening to me? I know you don't want to hear, but I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you anyway. I'm gonna tell you anyway. You guys want to listen? You know, Dick and Trace is amazing. How, how how we say we Christians? We we, we mm. listen to worldly music. We out mm. here, you know, you know, trying to to be buddy buddy with the whole entire world and everything the world is doing, and it's taking you away from being sensitive to the things of Christ. Amen. 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 And I'm just giving it to you straight tonight. Amen. But, it, but see, let me tell you how it happens in today's churches. We have many that say, Lord, I need mm -hmm. you to show me. See, we want the discernment. We want to snap our fingers and get it. God said, that ain't how you get it. That ain't how you get it. And I know that this needs to be taught everywhere. Because, see, we think just because we say snap our fingers, we automatically got the service. God said no. Mm -hmm. Because most Christians want God to show me, and then I'll make up my mind if that's what yeah. I want to do or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Sam. I think I hit a nerve. I think I hit a nerve, baby. They want God. They want God to show them and give them discernment and give them everything that they want from God. They want to know how to deal with the marriage. They want to know how to deal with the job. They want to know how to deal with all these other things. But they want God to give it to them and then they'll make a decision whether they want to do it God's way or not. Amen. 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 And let me say something. Listen to me. It don't work like that. Amen. God said that if you want to know me, Amen. and you want to know me in an upfront, personal, and intimate way, He said, I ain't going to show you nothing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You start walking the walk and Amen. talking the talk. Amen. And as you travel, come on. Boy, I tell y'all something. Amen. I'm stressing this voice out. But I tell you what, God is good. Amen. 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 As you keep walking with God, as you keep Amen. going in the right direction, you start getting the right instruction. Amen. Uh-huh. <laughs> Amen. If somebody don't like that, he says, Amen. Step by step, Amen. I'll lead you. Step Amen. By step. Amen. Now, somebody wondering why you're not getting the sermon, because you're not, listen, you're being conformed to the world too much. Amen. Amen. Now, you start, listen, you start, listen, shine away from some stuff, start Amen. getting close to God, start making Amen. Bible study, start Amen. making Life changing church, start making mm-hmm. church on Sunday, start reading your Bible, start mm-hmm. praying more, cut that mm-hmm. darn stupid thing off in your living room. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you tell me, what business do a Christian have sitting up watching a, what's that thing I told y'all this morning? What they call that thing, Sam? Not tweeting. What's that other thing? TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I just want to ask you, what in the world do a Christian? Amen. You got time to sit up and watch TikTok? Amen. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. Amen. You know it. You know it. And, and some of y'all might be trying to make a video for TikTok. Just cut it out. Cut it out. Uh-uh. Cut it out. I'm telling you right now. That's going, you're walking too close to the world now. Amen. 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 And I just want to tell y'all, because some of y'all, God just checked you right there. You know what I And I love you. But me, that ain't going to get cocky in. All that crap alone, man. Amen. 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 Sit up and watch TikTok. Listen, yeah, sit up and watch TikTok. Like, listen, do you know that Dick and Tracy here ain't start putting these Bible studies online? Amen. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. You know, you got madness. Listen, you got me out there on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Out there on Facebook. Yeah. You don't watch, watch TikTok and they didn't watch the Sermon Sunday on, on YouTube. Amen. 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 You tell me, you think God can tell you everything? Come on. Mm-hmm. 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 When's the last time you watched a YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. 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 All right, I'm just talking, y'all. Do you think that God needs to show us, mm-hmm. and then after He show us, we'll make up our mind what we're going to do? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yes. Yeah. Our problem is, we have got to, uh, listen, uh, I'm talking to, let me talk to some of the mothers in the church, because I know they hear what I'm saying to y'all. Mm-hmm. Now y'all listen to this. You know, we done got to a, a dispensation in time where people want to judge it first to see mm-hmm. if they want to do it first. Mm-hmm. 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 So, 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 so the word, so the word, those in mottos, means the more you walk in God's will, the more he will reveal his will to you. Amen. Amen. Do Amen. God first. Amen. Do, no, he said this. He has already told you. He first mm-hmm. the kingdom of God and all his right hand. All things. You know what? You know what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. 
I know that a lot of people, they hear the word. He said, you need to be not just a hear the word. He wants you to be a doer the word. Amen. 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 See, now you begin to understand why this Romans chapter 12, verse 2 is so important. Amen. Because you always hear people say, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And then he says, and then all things will be added to you. And let me tell you something, that's exactly what Paul just taught you. Amen. Amen. And you heard that seek first the kingdom of God, but a lot of people ain't heard this. So you got to slow down now. you got to understand what those tomatoes mean. And when you understand that, it means, listen, as you walk with God, he'll reveal it to you as you walk with him. He said, do what you need to do with God first, and then he'll show you what to do. And let me tell you something, say, the reason why this Bosimatos, the reason why it says here, he said, that ye may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Can I tell y'all something, why this verse is so important? Because saints, I want you to make sure that what I just told you, that you write it down, that you keep it in your memory, because let me tell you something what you just learned. You just learned the secret in knowing God's will. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Let me tell you something. Yeah. If you the, if you the, listen, if you the ran over this, you'd have missed it. Mm -hmm. And I see somebody probably going mm -hmm. you just missed it. But I done came back and gave you a throwback. Mm -hmm. What he's really saying, what he's really saying, he just gave you the secret in knowing God's will. And it ain't no secret. Amen. It's a shame. It's written right here in the Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He said, as you walk and do his will, he'll begin to reveal to you his will. Now, now listen, I want to give you a lot of Bible and there's not a lot of food. Okay? Amen. Let me show you how you know this is true. How many of y'all, how many people I got here that's a Bible studier? That you need your Bible? If you don't got anybody here that needs your Bible, let me ask you something. They taught you this a long time ago, if you read the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. Do you remember Enoch? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody, oh, somebody already got it. Somebody already got it. Remember that Enoch used to walk with God in the cool of the day. He would walk with God. Mm -hmm. And they would walk together, they walk all day, they walk up, and one day God said, listen, Enoch, why don't you just come on and go to my house, and don't worry about going back to your house today. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, you can walk so close with God that that uh -huh. intimate relationship can be so profound that he said, uh -huh. Enoch, let's just walk right on into my house. My God. Amen. Amen. And what do you You sing songs like just a closer walk with me. You know what I'm saying? I hope that you really understand it. Amen. What I'm saying tonight. Amen. 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 Can I tell y'all one more thing about songs? Then I got to get back to this word. You remember? You know, let me let me let me, let me give me a minute to teach for a minute. You know, Paul. No, I'm sorry. I said Saul. Saul, mm -hmm. not Paul, y'all. Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul was the first king. That Israel had. Okay? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, Saint. Saul was a little cray cray. Y'all, 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 y'all don't want me to tell y'all the truth. Amen. 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 Well, listen, Jesse, Saul, the first king, okay? <laughs> I, you know, I was just gonna say, so I was bipolar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me come. Let's make those spears. Yes. Now somebody got it. I had to, I had, I had to say it for y'all to hear. You know, so I was bipolar, Minister Ted. If you have things, I'm telling you. Amen. So I, the guy was bipolar, man. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. 
His father sent them out to go find the donkeys that had ran off. Mm-hmm. And listen, so his father sent them off to find the donkeys that had ran off. And while he was on his way to find the donkeys, the prophet Samuel was on his way to find him. God, mm-hmm. you know what I'm not. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that. But I'm telling you that he was bipolar and God had a plan for him. Had a plan for really? his life. Mm-hmm. But he didn't know what the plan was until he met up with the prophet Samuel. Everything, man. And the prophet Samuel told him, don't even go back to the donkeys. He want to go by the donkeys. <laughs> he said, don't worry about them darn donkeys. He said, God has called you to be the king. He said, them donkeys already been found. He would say something. When you walk toward, you know, I'm going to tell you something. It's a miracle in the prophet's mouth. If you, mm-hmm. you, if you eat the prophet's food, you get the prophet's reward. Mm-hmm. You have to realize something. When he heard the word of the prophet, as crazy as he was, he believed it. Mm-hmm. Now, he might not have turned out to be the, the right man, mm-hmm. but let me tell you something. One lesson that Saul learned us. He said, it ain't how you start, it's how you finish. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm going on back to you. I'm going on back to See, you may not, listen, you might be conforming yourself to the world tonight. You might be walking the borderline. You might be playing hopscotch. You understand? You might be playing double dutch. But I'm here to tell you that if you make up your mind tonight and start going the other direction, God's got a blessing in store for you. Are you listening to me? Mm-hmm. All right. Yes, yeah, so man. Watch this. Now watch this. So the secret to knowing God's will is doing what? The more you do <clears throat> and walk out mm-hmm. what the Lord, what the scriptures mm-hmm. say clearly, right over the day, mm-hmm. the road ahead is going to be brighter for you. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, God really didn't start really working with pastor until I made up my mind. Mm-hmm. See, tonight he's trying to tell you, is your mind made up? Let me hurry up, y'all, because I ain't got much time. But what do you know? The word says, listen, do, and the road will get wider for you and get better for you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Listen, mm-hmm. there's no shortcut. It ain't no shortcut. It ain't no mm-hmm. shortcut. One thing I learned at 30, uh, well, all I know is I started in 1990, 92. You added up. Okay, listen. The one thing I learned since 1990, because I don't keep track of years, but I think it's about 32, 34 years I've been in ministry. Now, here's what we didn't need to miss. Let us be transformed. Mm-hmm. Because somebody say, Pastor, you're slipping. You just skipped over something. Listen, I ain't skipped over nothing. Mm-hmm. I may be, listen, I may be old, but I ain't see now. I do know the mm-hmm. scripture here that I skipped over. <laughs> he said... He said, do not be conformed to this world. Here's what you thought I missed. Say, Pastor, skip it. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, listen, y'all give me a few minutes with this. I didn't miss it. I skipped over it for a reason. Mm-hmm. He said, let us be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Now, you may say, Paul, already uh, covered that. Just don't copy the world. That's right. Mm-hmm. Just don't copy the world. But look at the group that are not conformed. And then you look at the groups that are trying to conform. Now let me tell you, here's some groups that I want you to look at that's trying not to conform to the world. Amish, the Amish people are not trying to conform to the world. Amen. No, they ain't. You ride out Lancaster, you're going to think mm-hmm. you went back in the 1800s. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something else. Who's wrapped up, covered up, the Muslims. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Them women is wrapped up from the head to the toe. They really look like they're not trying to be conformed to the world. Am I right? Now you tell me what I'm not. They don't look like they're trying to conform. It's just like the Pharisees. They don't look like they were trying to conform. You look at the Buddhists. They don't look. Look at the Buddhist monk with them hoods on, covered down just all the way down. Amen. You look at these people. You look at their dress. You know, you look at the Amish. They ain't driving 
Oh, nice looking cars. They got cars painted black. <laughs> they don't have no running water. They're not conforming to the world. <laughs> but that's not what he's saying here. <laughs> that's not what he's saying here. Listen, once upon a time, all they had was horses and buggies. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah. I'm really not that impressed. Because once upon a time, that's all they had was horses and buggies. <laughs> listen, we have, listen, we have to transform and renew. Somebody say transform and renew. And renew. And renew. Mm -hmm. now, this word transform in Greek means metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. That means that it changed yeah. into a completely different thing. See, mm -hmm. just like a caterpillar. Caterpillar got to turn into a butterfly. That's a completely mm -hmm. different thing. Mm -hmm. But now, that's physical on the outside. Mm -hmm. What he's mm -hmm. talking about, he's talking about, Paul is talking about mm -hmm. being changed in your mind. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. He's talking about having a spiritual transformation. Paul mm -hmm. said changing, mm -hmm. a spiritual transformation is going to change you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. It's going to change you into the mind of Christ. It's Amen. not physical, but it's spiritual. It's Amen. spiritual. Okay? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. i got to move now because my time is getting short. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now watch what he said. But you all, with an open face, I'm right there. You see what I'm at? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. He said, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, he said, are changed. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that something? And I just told you, the closer you walk with him, the more you're going to be like him, and the more you're going to get the understanding of him. Amen. He said, and, and through the same image of the glory to glory, even by the what? Spirit. Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit is what's Amen. changing us. Amen. The Spirit is what's changing us. Okay? Amen. I'm not talking about physically changing. You can dress up like a mummy, but don't mean your mind is transformed. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Can I get a witness? I want to make sure you get that. Okay? Amen. So what he's talking about, he's talking about your ideas change. Mm -hmm. Your ideas change. That's why you can't be conformed to the world. How do you think about the world? Your ideas are supposed to change. See, my ideas Amen. change. Some of y'all change in the night. Amen. You understand? If your ideas change, if your mind change, surely you ain't going to go out tomorrow if it's 95 degrees and put on a halter top and some daisy boots. <laughs> I might make you mad, but if you're going to do that, you need some serious transforming. Okay? Because God is trying to change the way you look at things. Amen. How you think? Yeah. Listen, he wants to know how you think about God. How you think about mm -hmm. God. He wants to change these things. Say, do you hear me tonight? Listen, he's saying that God wants to change. How you think about God, how you think mm -hmm. about death, mm -hmm. how you think about money, mm -hmm. how you think about things. Yeah, That's yeah. renewing your mind. Paul yeah, said renew, yeah. listen, yeah. he wants to renew all that. All that living. He wants to renew all that. Amen. Vicky, he wants to renew all that. Now, Amen. do I think more like the world, or do I think more like Jesus? See, what I'm trying to tell you, I'm talking about, I'm almost done, I'm talking about spiritual, spirit-inspired thinking. Listen, I want to say that again, so you write that down. He's talking about spirit-inspired thinking. Spirit-inspired thinking. It changed how I think about my marriage, how I think about money, how I think about, listen, everything in my life. Amen. Now, I want to give you an example before I let you go tonight. Let me give you an advantage. <clears throat> I tell you, my voice is coming back. Y'all keep praying for my voice. Amen. Okay? Amen. Listen, Amen. I want you to understand. Because when you start thinking with a spiritual inspired thinking, it changes from you thinking like man. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm living to live again. Amen. See, Amen. once upon a time, I just think, I'm just going to live until I die. Yeah. But I'm living to live again. See, that changed how I'm thinking. See, I just think, you know, you're going to die. You know, it would be boots in the ground. But now I realize that this body is just, 
It's just a, you know, it, it's just a tent. Mm-hmm. You understand? But my spirit going to be with the Lord. See, it changed my thinking. Now, let me give you this right mm-hmm. here. This is very important. I need you to go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 23, and I'm going to try to knock this out in a few minutes. I got five minutes. Watch this. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 23, and I'm about to give you an example of the difference in thinking. Listen, worldly thoughts, physical thinking, and spiritually minded thinking. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm writing in Matthew mm-hmm. chapter 16, verse 21 to 23, and I'm talking about spirit and spirit thinking. I want you to look at Jesus dealing with Peter. Now watch this. Watch this. From that time, from my right there, y'all there say amen, Matthew 16, amen. verse 21 amen. to 23. Amen. amen. He said, from that time forth began Jesus to show up to his disciples, because he told me he's going to die. He said, mm-hmm. from that time forth, He began to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Now, y'all heard that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, watch Mm -hmm. the first response from Peter. I'm going to show you the difference between thinking like a man Regular man, mm-hmm. worthy mm-hmm. man, and thinking spiritually inspired thinking. Because when you think like a man, you hinder the work of God. Mm-hmm. What's this? Mm-hmm. And then do it. Do it thinking like a man. Do mm-hmm. thinking like the world. Look what he mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, that's that old worldly thinking. Mm-hmm. That's right. I don't want you to die. I love you. <laughs> you my rabbi. Please don't go. <laughs> you need to stay here. Look what he said. They did took him and began to look and say, Be a star for me, Lord. Lord, be a star for me. I'm just a world. I'm still thinking like the world. I'm thinking like a natural man. I ain't thinking like no spiritual man. Come and keep God. What the world ever do? He said, "This should not be done unto me." He don't realize that Jesus don't die. He ain't got no hell to go to. Mm. That's right. Amen. Now look at verse twenty-three. I want you to see how Jesus handled his business. He said, "But he turned and said unto him, Peter." Get thee behind me, Satan. Because mm-hmm. remember, Satan mm-hmm. is the ruler of the law. I pray that we come together for you. Amen. I, pray you okay. I pray that you okay. put this together now. Amen. You're not thinking like Jesus. You're mm-hmm. thinking like Satan. Amen. That's right. He said, Thou art an offense to me. And I told you, when you think like the world, I just told you that you are a hindrance to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thou art an offense to me. Who wants you to say you're offense to him? Mm-hmm. Come on now. Mm-hmm. He said, For thou savest. Now, this word savest, let me tell you in the King James Version. This word savest means set your mind on. Mm-hmm. He said, set your mind mm-hmm. Now, let me read it with translate this word savest. saying, set your mind on. Set your mind on. Now, let me read it like that. He said, uh, get thee behind me, say, thou art an offense unto me, for thou setteth your mind not on the things that be of God, but on the things that be of men. Now, mm-hmm. this is Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. Say, it don't get no clearer than that. Amen. It don't get no clear to that. When you think like the world, you're thinking Amen. in a way that hinders what God wants to do for your life. Amen. Amen. You're, you're hindering where God can work on you. Mm-hmm. Now watch this. Do you know that you can be a hindrance to God? <laughs> That's why you're not supposed to be conformed to the world. Are you listening, Pastor? He said, right here, I'm going to read it one more time and let y'all go. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Saints, that's all I got for you. That's all I got for you tonight. Amen. Now, my question is, do anybody got any questions? Anybody? 
Any questions? Don't be a hit to God. Yes. I just wrote something at a little gauge. <laughs> almost like the same. Almost like the same when you give me the thing. It's almost like the same when you give me the thing. It's almost like the same when you give me the thing. Okay. Hold on. Hold on a second. Take this speaker off. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? I'm here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I've just written this morning, or yesterday morning, that don't let the devil have rings on your brain. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Amen. Don't let the devil have rings on your brain. <laughs> let me tell you something. Hey, you know what? It, my lesson, if, I, if, this, if I was going to preach this, that would be a perfect <laughs> topic for the yeah. sermon. Don't let the devil. Now, you know that might come back at you because I like that. Don't let the devil have <laughs> rain on your brain. Now, I got to watch out. I got some other preachers on this line. They might get to that before me. <laughs> don't let the devil have <laughs> rain <laughs> on your brain. <laughs> and just a minute, we don't want to put other commentary there. We'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 I'll tell y'all stuff. I got to give God the praise. Everybody, let's give God the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give him the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Don't let me know where I'm going to be brave because you'll never be the same. <laughs> and that'll be a real thing. <laughs> yes, it's real real thing. I don't know what we're going to do with these people on this. <laughs> but anyway, praise God. Let's go to God in prayer. You know, uh, you know, listen, we need to pray for Sister Mary. Sister Mary's sister's son has gotten shot in Philadelphia. And we need to pray for Sister Mary's family. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for Sister Mildred. Yes. I know you probably thought I forgot, Mother Hobbs. I thought you forgot. <laughs> no, baby, I ain't forgot. Yes. No, no, mm -hmm. no, no, that's yes. my big sister. I ain't going to forget what she say. No, I'm not going to forget her. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, her husband has stage four cancer, y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, things are, he's in the process. Yeah. Okay? So we need to make sure we pray for these two people tonight. Okay? Amen. All right? Amen. All right. Dear Lord Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we are in prayer for Sister Mary's sister's baby. It's our only child, 30 years old, Amen. and he's been shot down and dead. Amen. God, I ask you in Jesus' name that you just touch the Peace family tonight, that Amen. you cover them with your unfailing love. I pray, God, that you encourage their hearts to know that, you know, it ain't over. The God says it's over. Amen. And we have to realize that there is a place when you love the Lord and you're saved, God has prepared a place for you. Amen. And Amen. as I focus our prayer on Sister Mildred tonight, you know, it's hard to let go. But, you know, we always say, Lord, that we're going to let go and let God. But when death comes, we don't have a choice. we got to let God. But we serve a God of signs and wonders and miracles to perform. And God has allowed us to receive so much love, companionship, share so many wonderful moments in life together. And we have to always be reminded that God has a place where death don't have no sting. Mm -hmm. God has a place that the Sabbath never ends. God has a place where love and grace and mercy resides. Forever and ever. Yes. And God, let us be reminded that your goodness and your mercy still endures forever. Mm -hmm. I ask you to touch your heart. In fact, I want to talk to Sister Mildred, and I also want to talk to Sister Mary, peace and sister. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because you got to realize some things. When you're at that place in life, 
You need to talk to somebody to mm-hmm. encourage you in the Lord, in the Lord, not the world, in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. And let you know that God don't make mistakes. Mm-hmm. God, I pray over everyone that's on the line tonight. I pray you'll bless them. Watch over, keep them, cover them with the blood of Jesus. That no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And in tongue rise against them shall be condemned. And that we all grow in the fellowship and in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your word. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And Lord, help us to be strong and never to be conformed to this world. We love you and praise you. There's one more thing i got to ask you before I say amen. Did everybody, you can get off mute now. Did anybody get a word from the Lord tonight? Somebody. Amen. Amen. God bless you Amen. and keep you and heaven smile Amen. upon you. Don't forget tomorrow Amen. morning, we're right back to Moment Amen. with Messiah at 8.30 in the morning. God bless you. Amen. 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 Love you all. Amen. 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 Love you all. Bless you all. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.